A short-range, high-performance interceptor aircraft and a feat of British engineering, the Spitfire was the king of the skies during the Second World War. And now at the Military Aviation Museum in Tangmere, the volunteer team are working on a special project to help modern-day flying aces learn to pilot this iconic aircraft. We were building for the Boltby Academy uh, a Spitfire section, uh, most of the cockpit and the bit in front and the bit behind. They want to uh, have a simulator, so we're building the airframe uh, to, uh, to as close as possible to original standards. They're providing a lot of the parts. Uh, we've had some experience trying to build one for ourselves that they were quite enthusiastic about, and that led them to asking us if uh, we would do the same job for them. For its operational life, the Spitfire went through many different designs, and not all of these have survived, meaning that the team has had to reverse engineer many aspects of the cockpit. There are some drawings, but not all drawings. Um, some dimensions we've had to estimate, some dimensions we've had to try and work out by reverse engineering, and some dimensions, well, we still don't know, so we're placing it there. So it's not as if we have a complete set of drawings, it's not as if we know every part. We've got certain pieces, we've been given certain pieces, we're making up missing parts and we're trying to get it as close as possible, certainly within the cockpit, so where the, what the pilot sees has to be as good as possible and look right, basically. Our major concern was the airframe to start with, although the guys are now fitting it out. Until you have an airframe, you've got nothing to fit out. So the core structure is what our first problem was. And that was, you know, trying to make up pieces and use the, the bits that we were given. We're enjoying ourselves. We're just making a bit of it. It's great fun, you know. And the fact that the customer thinks it's good is even better. The engine, propeller and fuel tank have all been replaced with electronics as this Spitfire is being made into a sophisticated flight simulator, but makes use of some genuine wartime parts so that it feels as close to the real thing as possible. What they said was they wanted a seasoned Spitfire pilot and they quoted the chief test pilot from Rolls-Royce, who flies their Spitfire, to be able to sit in this thing eventually and for him it had to look right and feel right. So we sort of gulped a bit and then thought, OK, we'll give it a go. The instrumentation, the steering column and so on are provided by Boltby, uh, and as we understand it, they're all original, but they have to be adapted to be driven in a different way, obviously, because the aircraft's not flying. But sometimes it's just making simple little things, making little brackets, making little fittings, making missing parts, and seeing them go together and appear to work and appear to sort of be right. So uh, it's, it's sometimes it comes down to just the individual parts because no matter what this is, it's one piece bolted or riveted to another, bolted or riveted to another, and so it goes on. It's not one complete piece. It's lots of little bits put together. So uh, they're all satisfying in their own way. And when all the work is done, will Simon and all the other engineers get to take their creation for a test flight? Bet your boots we are, yeah. <laughs> and as we understand it, we have access to it. We can pick up the phone and go along and say, I'd like to book some time on it sort of thing. So yeah, of course. For me, personally, the fun is the making. The fun is, you know, sawing the bits, filing the bits, riveting the bits, bringing it together and realising, that's right, that works. Um, yes, it's great fun to fly it and all the rest of it, but actually, for me, it's just the making. I love the making of it. Richard Stringer, That's TV.